Hey guys, if you spend enough time around crypto and decentralized tech, you start to notice a pattern. The loudest stories are often about price, speculation, or the latest hype cycle. Meanwhile, some of the most important work is happening quietly in tooling, infrastructure, and the way developers actually build things. This video is about four updates that sit firmly in that second category. None of them are about overnight gains. All of them are about how decentralized systems are slowly becoming more usable, more expressive, and in some cases, more self-aware. We are going to talk about a new open source database framework on the internet computer, a creative NFT tool added in Juno serverless tag, a short form game challenge launched by Caffeine, and a moment that many in decentralized AI have been waiting for, that is BitNSR's first DAO halving. These stories sit in different corners of the ecosystem, but they share a common thread. Each one shows how decentralized platforms are trying to move beyond theory and into everyday practice. Now, let's start with developers. Building applications on the internet computer has always come with a trade-off. On one hand, you get persistent smart contracts, on-chain compute, and the ability to serve full web applications directly from the network. On the other, you often have to think far more carefully about data storage than you would in a conventional web stack. For years, teams building data-driven apps on ICP have had to roll their own solutions. Stable memory layouts, serialization, indexing, access control, none of it is impossible, but all of it takes time and mistakes can be costly. That's the problem ICDBMS is trying to address. The project has just reached its first public release with version 0.1.0 and at its core is a simple idea. What if defining a database on the internet computer felt more like defining one in a traditional application? Instead of manually assembling storage logic, developers define their schema directly in Rust. Tables, primary keys, relationships, all described using annotated structs. From there, ICBBMS generates a relational style database canister that can be deployed straight onto the network. It uses a derived macro to do most of the heavy lifting. CRUD operations are generated automatically. Query support filtering and pagination. Transactions are included with begin, commit, and rollback semantics. Access control lists allow developers to define who can read or write specific data. The framework also exposes a strongly typed candid interface, which matters more than it sounds. It reduces boilerplate and makes it easier for frontends and other canisters to interact with stored data without guesswork. This approach reflects a broader shift inside the ICP ecosystem. Rather than asking every team to become experts in low-level memory management, Tools like ICDBMS aim to raise the abstraction level. The goal isn't to hide how the internet computer works, but to make common patterns less repetitive and less error prone. That said, this is still an early release. Version 0.1.0 covers the basics, but features many developers expect from mature relational systems are still on the roadmap. Joins, indexing, schema, migrations, SQL style queries, validation rules, column constraints. None of those are live yet. For simple projects or experiments, the current feature set may already be enough. For larger applications, teams will likely wait to see how performance holds up and how quickly those missing pieces arrive. Even so, ICDBMS marks a clear step in a direction many developers have been asking for a Rust native schema driven way to manage persistent data on ICP that feels closer to conventional software development without pretending the platform's constraints don't exist. From developer tooling, let's shift to creators. Juno has been steadily positioning itself as the serverless layer for the internet computer. Its pitch is straightforward. Deploy wasm based applications with zero DevOps overhead directly onto ICP. No servers to manage, no infrastructure glue. 
Just code that once. Recently, Juno added a new project to its community showcase that highlights how that model works for creative use cases. The project comes from a self-taught artist who goes by Aimsomnia, it's his uh, Twitter handle. They responded to Juno's open call for community submissions by sharing a personal portfolio featuring pixel art, AI-generated illustrations, motion graphics, and NFT drops on platforms like Malo. Among the showcase tools, it's an NFT generator built entirely on the internet computer. What stands out here is in the existence of yet another NFT tool, but how it's deployed and who it's aimed at. The generator allows users to design, generate, and manage NFT collections without needing to set up a complex backend. Everything runs in Wasm containers via Juno's serverless framework. The interface supports advanced layer management, bulk operations, and high-performance background processing powered by web workers. There is project persistence through zip import and export along with smart caching to keep things responsive. Under the hood, the stack is familiar to modern web developers, SvelteKit to TypeScript, Tailwind CSS, Canvas API. The difference is where it runs. The entire application lives on ICP with blockchain integration handled at the infrastructure level rather than bolted on later. For artists and collectors, the NFT studio offers a professional environment to manage generative workflows without needing to think about servers or deployment pipelines. For Juno, it's a practical example of what democratizing dApp building looks like in practice. The way this project entered the showcase is also telling. Juno encouraged developers to share anything they were building, websites, apps, experiments, Aimsomnia shared links, Juno replied with a simple message, you are live. The showcase order is randomized on each deploy, reinforcing the idea that this isn't about ranking or promotion, but visibility. It's a small detail, but it speaks to the kind of culture Juno is trying to cultivate. From creative tooling, let's move to rapid experimentation. Kiffin has launched a short, time-limited holiday game challenge, and the format is deliberately lightweight. Builders are invited to create and publish a live holiday-themed game using the platform. The submission window opened on 15th December and runs through to 17th December, closing just before midnight Eastern time. There is no prescribed genre, no rigid format. The only real requirements are that the game is live, complete, and functional when it's reviewed. To enter, creators submit through a type form and comment on the challenge post with a direct link to the game they built using Kiffy. Each participant gets one submission, which keeps the judging process manageable and avoids spam. Prizes are awarded in Kiffy credits. 400 credits for first place, 250 for second, 150 for third. These aren't life-changing rewards and that seems intentional. The challenge is framed less as a competition and more as a prompt. A reason to build something quickly, share it publicly, and see how the tools behave under real constraints. Caffeine's broader vision centers on prompt-driven creation. The idea that users can move from concept to working application in a short space of time without deep technical overheads. The idea that users can move from concept to working application in a short space of time without deep technical overhead. Games fit that vision well. They are interactive, easy to understand, and immediately testable. Short challenges like this have become common across developer platforms, especially at quieter points in the calendar. They lower the barrier to entry, encourage rapid prototyping, and often surface unexpected uses of the underlying technology. Winners will be announced on 19 December, but the real outcome will be the collection of small, playable experiments that emerge along the way. If you find Ledger Life useful and want to support the work that goes into covering these kinds of stories, there are donation details in the description. Thanks for your time and I'll see you in the next one.